In coronavirus news, health officials are keeping a close eye on the new Mu variant, which could potentially be resistant to vaccines. Dr. Malathi Srinivasi with Stanford Healthcare joins us now. What do we know about this variant? Yeah, Janet, the uh, Mu variant is the fifth COVID variant of interest identified by the World Health Organization. And it's concerning to us because it has a series of escape mutations in the spike protein and other surface proteins that might make it more resistant to the antibodies that we're making from the vaccines, including the dreaded EEC mutation in the uh, E484 area which also makes it spread more easily. So uh, the World Health Organization has two levels of concern for, uh, uh, for variants. The first one is things they call variants of concern. And these are things like the variants alpha, beta, gamma, and delta, which are demonstrated to make people very sick and spread very easily. And the second, of, the second is the category of things they're keeping an eye on. And this includes uh, things like uh, the lambda variant, which was found in Peru, and the mu variant, which was first identified in Colombia back in January. So in January, when it was identified, it was a very small proportion of the cases in Colombia, but now it's almost 40% of all of their variants and all of the sequenced uh, uh, COVID strains that they're getting. And it's found now in 40 countries, including the US, uh, including in California, and especially in Florida, where it seems like it's about 10% of the cases. Now we know that the Delta variant right now is about 90, over 90%, 99% of all of the US cases. And it came to the US, spread very quickly, made people very sick, especially those people who were unvaccinated. And the concern is that the um, mu variant might do the same because it's substantially different from Delta and it has more mutations. Now, uh, what happens in the lab when people are testing is different than what happens in, uh, in real life. The critical issue to remember is that even if the vaccines are only partially effective against the mu variant or the Delta variant, the most important thing is still to get vaccinated because they still offer some protection and actually pretty good protection against Delta. And we're hoping that they'll offer some protection or very good protection against mu. So speaking of vaccines, I know as parents, that is something top of mind for us. We are able to get vaccinated, but kids are not just yet. So why is it taking so long to get vaccines approved for younger children? The, these trials are incredibly complicated and two things have happened. The first is the government had wanted more than the uh, original planned enrollment of about 4,000 people into these trials. And it's hard to get uh, parents often to uh, coordinate with their kids to be able to bring them in for these trials. And second, the logistics of handling these mRNA vaccines at the 162 sites around the world for the Pfizer vaccine trials um, has been challenging. And um, uh, you uh, probably know that these vaccines need to be stored in a concentrated format um, at like negative 90 uh, degrees Celsius, so really ultra cold. And they have to be transported at zero degrees or at, uh, you know, well below freezing. Um, they're diluted uh, with saline and used within six hours. They have, they can only be stored for two hours at room temperature, and they have to be diluted in a very specific way in, uh, in clean rooms by pharmacies. So if you're at a site where uh, you have parents who want to participate, but the uh, a uh, uh, site where the vaccines are being prepared is off-site. The logistics become very, very complicated. And the last thing is that kids can't share symptoms as well as adults can. And so it's hard to know how effective they are because a little kid who's a little bit sick may not be able to tell you, oh, mom, I'm feeling sick because of uh, uh, I'm getting a COVID or something along those lines. Um, and so the uh, outcomes also are a little bit more challenging. The original plan was that uh, Pfizer would submit the emergency use authorization for children who were 2 to 11 um, at the end of September. And uh, we think that they're probably going to miss this mark just by a little bit. And hopefully by, um, uh, by early uh, October, they'll submit the emergency use authorization. And um, uh, after that, it'll probably take a couple months uh, for the FDA uh, to go through and the CDC to go through that data and uh, make sure that indeed 
indeed the vaccine is both safe and effective. Now, we're not expecting any surprises because we know that in general, kids respond better to vaccines than adults do. And the uh, studies with adolescents, uh, both for Pfizer and Moderna, have shown that um, the uh, uh, children have much less side effects also. So it tends to be safer and more effective in kids. And we're not expecting anything that's going to be uh, surprising here. Um, what is the latest on the booster shots and how are they still expected to roll out? Is it still expecting to be the week of September 20th? I think that we're hoping for the best, but I think that we're probably going to miss a general rollout for the boosters um, on September 20th by about a week or two. Um, right now, the CDC has only uh, uh, given us permission to uh, immunize those people with a booster who are immunocompromised. So people who are getting active cancer treatment, organ transplantation, taking immunosuppressive medications, stem cell transplants, moderate severe immunodeficiency, advanced or untreated HIV, or people who are taking steroids that might suppress their immune system. And uh, so at Stanford, we're following those CDC recommendations. And this is, again, very frustrating for the millions of Americans who know that their immunity is waning at about six to eight months and who are eligible uh, potentially to get the booster. So, you know, that's like 200 million for Pfizer, almost 150 million for Moderna and about uh, 14, 15 million for Johnson & Johnson. So uh, we're hoping that uh, we can get the boosters approved soon. Um, the Moderna people have submitted their uh, phase two data for uh, a small number of people. But because the booster was half the dose of the original vaccine, uh, the FDA is looking very closely to see if they uh, chose the right dose and uh, if it's as effective as it can be. So we're still all waiting our turn and I'll be waiting in line as soon as uh, my spot opens up. Oh, such good information. Yes, I will be too. Dr. Malathi Srinivasan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Diana. It's great to see you again.